Welcome to Circuit Secrets. In this video, I'm going to show you how to set up a Windows 7 computer to program the Raspberry Pi Pico. At the time I'm making this video, the Raspberry Pi Pico is definitely still bleeding edge technology. There is not yet support for Arduino and the documentation is somewhat limited and can be daunting if you are not used to studying data sheets. The documentation for Linux and Python seems somewhat more complete than other options. If you program with a Windows machine like I do and prefer programming in C and C++ then the situation is much worse. For you I will try to explain everything as thoroughly as possible and show you some of the common pitfalls, why they happen and how to avoid them. This video focuses on Windows 7 but the process should be similar through Windows 10. The first thing you need to do is download all the files. With Raspberry Pi Pico in its current state, you need to download a lot of files to be able to compile in C and C++. The files you will need to download are the ARM GCC compiler. This is what builds the executable from your code and libraries. CMake, which is used for defining all the build options in the make files. This determines what libraries and files are compiled and resolves locations. It can be thought of as an automated generator for native make files required by the compiler. Python, which is a high level language and is used by both the SDK and GCC. Visual Studio Code, which is the integrated development environment providing an editor and code checking. Build tools for Visual Studio, which gives support for the C and C++ language. The Pico Pi SDK, which is the software development kit, has all of the Raspberry Pi Pico specific libraries. The Pico Pi examples, which you will use to test your build environment and is a great reference library. The tiny USB library, which is linked into your projects to provide a serial to USB connection for communicating as a COM port for debugging and other tasks. The most important common mistake when installing these files is a mistake with setting the paths. A path is used to give directions to programs and your operating system. These directions tell things like Visual Studio where to find an SDK or a compiler. You can find links to all the needed files in this video's description below. When you install these, make sure you have administrator privileges. First, make sure you are running Windows 7 Service Pack 1. If you don't have Service Pack 1, you need to update your system software. This can be done with system updates located in the control panel or on the Microsoft website. Make sure you know if your system is 32 or 64 bit before downloading files. Now you will install Python. Windows 7 only supports Python up to version 3.8.7. Once it is downloaded, run the installation as administrator. Use custom settings. Make sure you have selected add path. And install for all users. Next, download the ARM toolchain. Now install as administrator the GNU ARM toolchain which includes the GCC compiler. Select all options and add path.
you will know when it is finished by the pop-up readme file. Then close the command prompt window. Next, download CMake 3.14 Windows Installer for either 32 or 64-bit systems. Now install CMake and add path. Next, download build tools for Visual Studio 2019. Now install the build tools. Once the options appear, only install C++ and only with the default settings. Next, download Visual Studio Code. Now install Visual Studio Code. Next, download the zip file for the Pico SDK. Unpack it to the directory of your choice. I installed it under C, Pico. Make sure you know where you put it as you will need to specify the path later. Next, download the zip file for the Pico examples. Unpack it wherever you want. I installed it under CPico next to the SDK. Make sure you know where you put it as you will need to specify the path.
Now you need to set the paths. Warning, be very cautious changing the path values and variables of your computer. If you delete something important, your computer may stop functioning properly. I am not responsible if you do this and you cause a problem with your computer. If you are unsure of your skills, don't be afraid to ask someone, preferably a professional, for help. Click the Windows Start button and type Edit the System Environment Variables and press Enter. When System Properties pops up, click on Environment Variables. The top field is User Variables and the bottom field is System Variables. Under User Variables, click New and type Pico underscore SDK underscore Path in the field labeled Variable Name. In the field labeled Value, type the path. This is the path to the Pico SDK you downloaded. Save the entry by clicking OK. Click New once more. For Variable Name, type Path with a capital P. For Value, type the path that leads to the bin or binary directory of Microsoft Visual Studio Code. Then click OK. Now make sure you have the values needed in System Variables under the variable titled Path. Select the variable and click Edit. I found it is difficult to read all the variables in the small field, so I copy the entire field and paste it into Notepad. You can click on the text box to select it, right click and select Select All, the text should be highlighted. Right click on the text and select Copy. Open Notepad and click Paste. You should see a long line of text. In Windows 7, multiple paths are separated by the semicolon, which indicates the end of a string, the same as in programming in C. Look through your list of paths and see if the list is complete. If you need to add one, add it on the right at the end of the string. Make sure to add a semicolon before you enter each missing path to indicate to Windows it is a separate entry. To make it easier to read the path information, you can select the space following a semicolon with your cursor and click Enter to place the following entry on a new line. If you use this method, make sure you remove each new line by using backspace at the start of each path to organize the data back into a single string after you are finished editing. Windows will not recognize multiple strings separated by a new line return for path information with or without a semicolon. You will need the paths to Python, Python scripts, CMake binaries, new ARM toolchain, Visual Studio Code, and any other paths your computer already has set. Once you have the string of paths complete in Notepad, copy it back to the environmental variable value of path and click OK. Now click on Start and search through installed programs until you find Developer Command Prompt. Right click on it and select Run as Administrator. When programming in Windows, it is more reliable if your tools have administrator privileges to ensure access to any folders to read and write. At the command prompt, type code and press enter. In the left extension panel, search for C and C++ and install it. Then search for CMake Tools and install it.
Once installed, right-click on CMake in the left panel and click on Extension Settings in the Context menu. Now find the heading CMake Generator, and under the CMake Generator to use, type NMake Make Files. Now find the heading CMake Configure Environment and under Environment Variables to pass to CMake during Configure, click Add Item. For Item, type Pico underscore SDK underscore Path. For Value, type your path to your Pico SDK. Now find the heading CMake colon CMake path under name path of CMake executable to use type CMake. In Visual Studio Code, click on File, click on Open Folder, and navigate to the Pico Examples folder. Visual Studio Code should start parsing the source files. When it pops up, select GCC for ARM, None, EABI, then some more pre-processing should take place. The messages output at the bottom of the screen should complete without any error codes. If there is an error about unable to find something, double check your paths. Now at the bottom of Visual Studio Code, click Build. If everything works, it should take 7 to 10 minutes, and during this time, the debug window should give you some information, including percentage complete on the projects. If it throws an error, it is most likely a mistake on paths or improper file installation. After it finishes, it should say Build Finished with Exit Code 0. This means no errors. Congratulations, the Raspberry Pi Pico build tools are working. The next step is to flash a program to the Raspberry Pi Pico. Open your file manager, otherwise known as My Computer, and navigate to the Pico Examples folder. In that folder, you should find the Build folder. Inside the Build folder, you should see several folders including one called Blink. Inside the Blink folder, you will find several files including Blink.uf2. This is the program that will make the built-in LED on the Pico Pi flash. Right-click on this file and select Copy from the Context menu. Hold the Boot Cell button on your Pico Pi and plug it into the USB port with a micro USB cable. The computer should alert you that a USB storage device has been plugged in and ask if you want to open the folder. Open the folder and you should see two files. Paste the Blink file into the folder. The computer should sound that a USB device has been disconnected, the folder should close, and the LED on the Pico will start flashing. Congratulations! You have just programmed your first Raspberry Pi Pico with C and C++. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe to Circuit Secrets.